Take three. Take four. <laughs> Peter? Yes, Yasmin? How illegal are magic mushrooms? Magic mushrooms, also known as psilocybin mushrooms, are 100% illegal in the U.S. right now. Under the Controlled Substances Act, they are in the category of highest illegality, which is called Schedule 1. The way that the Controlled Substances Act works is it's broken down to a number of schedules that basically say how illegal, how tightly restricted drugs are. Okay. So like opioid painkillers, a lot of those are in Schedule 2, which means like you have to have a doctor's prescription, they can't write a refill on the prescription, you have to get a new prescription every time, and it gets less restrictive as it goes down. Got it. So what are the main criteria for being in, say, Schedule 1? Yeah, so Schedule 1 basically means that a drug is totally unsafe and worthless for medicine. It means that it has a high potential for abuse and it has no accepted medical value. Currently, magic mushrooms don't check either of those boxes that's up for debate based on current research. So there's a team of psychiatrists at Johns Hopkins University, in addition to several others around the country, but they've been doing research on psilocybin mushrooms for a while. And in a paper they have coming out in the journal Neuropharmacology in October, uh, they argue that psilocybin should actually be moved into schedule four. That's a big drop in schedule. It's a huge drop. So that's the category that includes drugs like Xanax and Ambien, uh, the painkiller Tramadol. So I've got the paper pulled up right here. And basically what, it's, what they did in this paper is they examined the abuse potential of medical psilocybin according to uh, what's called the eight-factor analysis of the Controlled Substances Act. And it's eight categories, but basically what it breaks down to is like, do people abuse this drug? Is it safe? Can it treat conditions? Okay, so it sounds like their review shows that it is actually helpful. People don't really abuse it, at least in hospital or in clinics. Yes. Yeah, so all the research they've done in the past number of years, they've done, uh, you know, guided therapeutic sessions. So like a psychologist or psychiatrist is sitting with somebody while they take psilocybin. They are looking at whether mushrooms can help people quit smoking or can help people experiencing depression and anxiety with a cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. They're guided. They're not somebody sitting on the couch, sort of eyeballing a dose from a bag of mushrooms. These are like carefully controlled situations and not a recommendation for self-medication. They've actually got like a special playlist that uh, that doctors at Johns Hopkins designed, like a seven-hour playlist. What's on this playlist? Oh, it's like a lot of uh, sort of instrumental stuff. There's a lot of symphonic music. Uh, it ends with like uh, some Louis Armstrong and the Beatles. It's chill as hell. Yeah, it's, it's a super chill playlist. I like to listen to it while I work sometimes. I actually linked to it in an Inverse article about it. Tell me a little more about this Spotify playlist for tripping on mushrooms. Yeah, so uh, it was designed primarily by psychologist Bill Richards, who is part of uh, the Roland Griffiths lab at Johns Hopkins, the same people who wrote this new paper okay. and who've been looking at psilocybin for years. Uh, and he explained to me that uh, he avoids music with words in the language of the person who's listening to it. He said, uh, so as to discourage the rational mind from following the content of the words. He says, the human voice as a solo or choir can be very supportive, even maternal, but it is received as another instrument of the orchestra, so. Okay, so when you're tripping, you don't wanna be thinking actively about words. I think they don't want to like put ideas in your head. They're trying to, you know, maybe you are thinking about words, but they're not trying to take you somewhere specific. It's like all about where your own mind goes. Got it. So it's a whole bunch of instrumental stuff, spa music, chill music, and at the end <laughs> there's there's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of classic tunes to bring you back. Uh, there's "Here Comes the Sun" by the Beatles. There's uh, swing low, sweet chariot, and That's then so great. yeah, it's a little strange, but it's a gentle, nice song. And then it finally ends with "What a Wonderful World" by Louis Armstrong. <laughs> and if 
psilocybin mushrooms get put into schedule four, maybe it will be a bit more of a life cycle, Peter. Wow. Yeah. I did it. You did it. <laughs> Later. <laughs>